last time on PC fighting games. Oh, oh my god. And I could probably make a follow-up talking about... Oh. of Pain comes to us from Mirage Entertainment. The first thing that catches my eye is this very clean setup program that lets you easily rebind controls, do you even get a lot of options for sound, video, and gameplay? In fact, this interface seemed really familiar to me for some reason. I'd definitely seen it before. My assumption was that maybe this was some kind of standard setup for whatever engine it was programmed on, like the devs just had to plug in the options for their specific game. After all, it was released in 1997, so it's not out of the question. Then I remembered. Yep. This is the same Mirage who put out Rise of the Robots, one of the worst fighting games of all time. Oh, I can't even describe how bad this feels. Now, if Rudder was PC exclusive, it would absolutely have a spot here, but it released on, uh, frankly, too many platforms. Theater of Pain? This is a DOS game through and through. Look at that... Uh, box art. So, given the pedigree of the developers, how good can this be? Well, Rise of the Robots' claim to fame was its revolutionary 3D graphics. By 97, that wasn't so impressive. So what does Theater of Pain look like? Oh, 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 it's... Oh, why do they look like that? All the characters, they're just like sacks of flesh glued together and given rough texturing. It's not pleasant. I actually think the models in Rise of the Robots lend a lot better to this art style. If there's a story, it's not available in-game or anywhere online, so it's just a collection of Roman-inspired characters duking it out in various mythological settings. The environments don't look full 3D, but I'm assuming it's multiple layers of pre-rendered backgrounds and a moving camera to simulate the effect. Now, I'm a sucker for parallax scrolling, but that doesn't save the fact that the whole game feels empty. And I don't think that it's just the lack of any music whatsoever. That doesn't help, but the backgrounds are pretty lifeless. The only stage with any people in it is the Colosseum one. It's a cool setting with this overbearing red sky and visible planets. It really feels like a divine battleground. Except all of the people in the background are still images, just watching the action in silence. One of my favorite tropes of fighting games are stages where there's a crowd cheering in the background, that's King of Fighters specialty, and it really livens up the gameplay. As it is, the fights are more awkward than anything else. What I was most worried about were the controls. Rise of the Robots was unbearably stiff, and executing any special moves in that game felt like a lottery. I can gladly say that Theater of Pain is much more responsive, but that doesn't mean that it's out of the woods yet. It's often described as being similar to Mortal Kombat, but it reminds me of a weird amalgamation of the three old-school series. It's a six-button fighter with specials that change depending on the strength of the button you press, and it features a super meter. There's also target combos that work kind of like a cross between Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat, but also a lot of them are more like chain combos. It, it, you know what, I, I won't get bogged down in fighting game jargon. Suffice to say, it has a decent mix of special moves and canned combos that can actually be cancelled into specials. Neat. Every character even has two supers. Overall, the mechanics are pretty solid, but I have left out one important thing. This gauge. 
This is Theater of Pain's innovative feature, the unblockable meter. When your opponent blocks your attacks, your unblockable meter fills, and when it's full, you can execute a kind of super move that is, as the name implies, unblockable. It's an interesting idea. One unique element of designing a competitive game is that there can be flaws in your mechanics that you literally can't predict until a dedicated player base has been using it for some time. Now, I haven't played every fighting game, but I have at least booted these up, and I've never seen a mechanic quite like the unblockable meter before. The closest thing I can think of that resembles it is the risk gauge in Guilty Gear that makes defensive play less safe. I'm genuinely curious as to how something like unblockables would play out in a more popular game. It might be a balancing nightmare. I mean, look how much gauge you get just off of this one move. I'm surprised it's not been done in anything else. If it has been done, I guess let me know in the comments. Theater of Pain isn't terrible by any means. Its worst points are definitely in the visual and audio department. Uh, hitboxes sometimes don't seem to match up with how long the animations play. The animations themselves can be a little stiff, as can the controls, but I'm aware that some delay might be coming from DOSBox itself. Overall, much more than I was expecting from the Rise of the Robots guys. Hey, speaking of something surprisingly decent, a Shadow Fighter. This one comes to us from Gremlin Interactive. That's right, baby! Zool! And Top Gear. Developed by Italian studio Naps, known for... Uh, they're still around? Huh. Shadow Fighter is a very competent 2D fighter. It's got an all-star cast of classic characters like Elektra and Slam Dunk. His Hadouken is a basketball. I joke, but there's more personality here than anything really in Theater of Pain. There's a whopping 16 characters. That's three more than Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo released the same year. And each one has a shockingly large moveset for a game with one attack button. The graphics are pretty pleasing with a lot of vibrant colors, animated backgrounds, and cool settings. My favorites are this waterfall and the back of a moving truck. The music is also serviceable, the most memorable track for me being that bass line in the versus screen. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Uh, if there's anything terrible about this game, it's the disc switching. <laughs> Even with the convenience of modern emulators, it still requires constant swapping between discs to go from character select to versus screen to game. Like, really? The gameplay itself is fine by all means, it's just this hardware limitation that slows the experience down. As I mentioned before, Nap's team is still around, but it looks like they've settled into releasing Eurojank mobile games for consoles and PC. A bit of a shame, but I feel like if they stuck to a more modest platform like phones, they could be a solid studio. I don't have that same glimmer of hope for 47 Tech, however. That's due in part to them not existing anymore, but you know, they were a California-based developer poised to change gaming forever with the jaw-dropping visuals in games like Creep Clash. What differences will gamers notice between pseudo-3D and true 3D? Watching fighting games like Mortal Kombat TM and Street Fighter TM is a bit like watching a ping-pong tournament. The characters move left and right across the screen, and the only way they can exchange positions is if they jump over one another. What's the difference between pseudo-3D titles such as Doom or Myst and true 3D titles like Sento and Team 47 Go Man. The difference is simple. All of the pictures you see in Mist are pre-rendered and limited in the number of angles at which they can be viewed. Doom is really just 2D with great scaling. In Sento and Team 47 Go Man, there is no limit to the number of angles from which the game can be viewed. We make the model for the world, and the user can see it at any distance or angle they choose. That's right, this is TRUE 3D. Eat your heart out, John Carmack. Why don't you binary space partition 47 text dick? 
Necrovania is alive. Alive with terror. <laughs> All across the land there were shrieks. What do we do now? Who will awake the undead? Who will hold the seance of the risen? I'm sure the 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 in-game graphics will be better. Okay, so there is no cycle setting in DOS that I can find that makes the game even remotely playable, so off to the internet. This website has the shareware version, so the roster is cut down from 4 to 2. What a travesty. Now that I can actually get a handle on the gameplay, what's it like? Uh, it's a neat tech demo? It is in full 3D, but the character models look more like balloon animals than monsters. The controls are all over the place. They were still trying to emulate the eight directions on an arcade stick, but using a keyboard, and it's just not very smooth. Half the time, I don't even know what my character is doing. Animations are vague, and there's no feedback for getting a hit other than, I don't know, is that like a pain state? 47 Tech made the bold decision to make a fighter with 3D environments that you can't see. It's just a black void. I thought Theater of Pain had empty stages. Jeez, at least they existed. There's really nothing to this game besides AI and two-player mode and a training mode. I can't see the training mode because despite hitting every key on the keyboard, including the ones I mapped in the setup, the cursor won't move. It's not a huge deal, I mean, like, what are you gonna practice? There's one attack button. It is a problem when I literally don't know how to move the cursor over to a different character, though. The most interesting thing about Creep Clash, I guess, is the music? I mean, listen to this groove. Now what floors me is how proud they were of this. In this interview with Game Zero magazine, CEO Mark Hirsch proclaims, Each of 47 Tech's team members is completely dedicated to true 3D. In areas where other game developers must catch up and retrain their people accordingly, 47 Tech is way ahead. The animators come from the film industry, one of the only fields where animators have been working in 3D for years. The programmers are already experts in the high-level languages required to program for the new 32 and 64-bit platforms. Each of 47 Tech's titles incorporates true 3D and their expertise shows. Their technology, vision, and skill are way ahead of the competition. Why martial arts fighting games? The 47... <laughs> The 47 Tech staff has a combined 35 years experience in numerous forms of the martial arts. 47 Tech's president, Mark Hirsch, received his degree in Eastern Studies. The office decor consists of weaponry on the walls. A long-time fascination with Japanese animation and science fiction dictates 47 Tech's natural path, the development of fighting games with a strong Eastern influence. They released another game the same year as Creep Clash called Sento. Uh, I'm not gonna play it, so let's check it out on YouTube. <laughs> Well, they figured out how to do environments. In another interview with Game Zero, published in 1995, Mark Hirsch expounds on their next big title, Team 47 Go Man, sometimes known as uh, Watchy, I guess. It's not a fighting game, but an action game about mechs versus monsters. It looks like an actual step up in terms of gameplay and graphics, but 47 Tech would close one year later in 1998. I guess putting out two absurdly bad games in one year doesn't endear customers to your brand. Why does this channel always seem to come back to trashy? K. 
Cat Fight, the ultimate female fighting game. This was a 1996 title published by Atlantean Interactive, who you might know if you're an avid Civ 11 fan. Developed by Phantom Card, known for... This game. You boot it up and... This is... something. Now the game itself is... I think I think I gotta take a breather. I think I'm gonna- I'll be back in a sec. No, no, like, I don't get it. Like, is it... Like, is it a prank or something? I don't... Okay, so, the game will only run at an appropriate speed on Windows XP, and if you think I'm setting up a virtual machine with a pirated copy of XP just to play Catfight, the ultimate female fighting game... You are a pirate! Your Being a pirate is a red to do what you want, cause No. Fuck no, I'm not doing that. Fuck this game. I am curious about... Uh, watch mode, however? Oh, it's just running random fights with the AI. Okay, whatever. Wait, what's cat attack? So, battling butlers. Daddy, read me a story. Okay, now listen carefully. So dreadful was the sadness of the butlers. So terrible that, that they vowed to put into practice what their masters had taught them and fight one another until only one would survive. And he would be the new master. And so arose the era of the battling butlers. Let me break this down. Various animated objects called butlers are fighting to become the master of the butlers. It's another traditional 2D fighter with 3D models and pre-rendered backgrounds. This game was released in 1996 by a developer called Shadow Riders, who appear to be a three-man team. From a graphical, audio, and even gameplay perspective, this is pretty impressive. It looks like bowling alley animations turned into a fighting game. We've got a roster of five characters, Ace High, Slammer, Ringo, Jumpy, and Talk. There's four buttons for high and low punches and kicks, and a special button. There's nothing approaching a combo system, it's pretty awkward, attacks have weird amounts of startup and recovery, and I have no idea how the special button is supposed to work, but it's not terribly unenjoyable. The music is actually quite good. The controls are functional, and the backgrounds have a certain charm to them. Part of that charm comes from how strange the whole thing is. It was published by the now-defunct Israeli company Machshavet, and it's the only project listed for anyone involved. It just... exists... out there, in the aether. This aggressively weird, but not awful DOS fighting game. I'd even recommend checking it out if you want to hit a door with a phone. That's all for this episode of Weird PC Fighters. There's even more of these things, and I could make more sequels if I wanted to. Uh, but I want to know if you have any suggestions. It feels at times like a bottomless pit, and I'd love to hear what games you remember. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and for all the support that the channel's been getting recently. It's really nice. 
Uh, stay cool.